all know that the diamond problem B here, I'm going to do the diamond problem quickly because we've already seen this. Five goes here, six goes here. Are you with me still? We're going to get what two numbers? Mm -hmm. Three and two, two or three, it really doesn't matter. Do we have the extra step or not for this? No, the one, it's a, a, a equals one there. So we're going to have x plus three. That's right, x plus two. But now this is different than other examples because we have this equal to zero. Now, this is a cool thing. We have to have it equal to zero because we're going to use something called the zero product property. If this was not zero, folks, this would not work. This has to be zero for this to work. But here's what the zero product property says. It says if I have two things that are multiplied together that equal zero, what do you know for a fact about one of these things? Yeah. One of them has to be. That's the only way you can multiply something and get zero. One of them has to be zero. Do we know which one? No. Could they both be? Yeah. So we're going to take this and apply it to this case. We have two things, this means multiplication, two things that are multiplied together to equal zero. Zero product property says each one of them could be zero. X plus three could equal zero. X plus two could equal zero. Can you solve this? Can you solve that? So if you subtract three, we get X equals negative three. Subtract 2, we get x equals negative 2, and you know what? We've got two solutions. Both of them are going to work. The reason why they work is because if you plug this in here, it creates 0. 0 times anything is 0. Plug in a negative 2 here, that creates 0. 0 times anything is 0. That's how we're going to use this in our equations. How many people understood today? We're pretty good about it. All right. Um, all right, so as you remember from last time, we did our factoring. Uh, we're going to combine that with our equations and continue to solve some of those equations that involve factoring. The first one I want to take a look at, they look a little intimidating at first, but if you follow the steps that I gave you in our very first lesson, how to solve those equations, and you follow our steps for factoring, these ones shouldn't be too bad. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this problem. So remember, we took a break from C.1 and we did the factoring from C.4. Now we're back to C.1 and we're going to use that stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at our problem on the board here. If you remember our steps from how to solve equations, can you tell me what's the first thing that we should do? That's from factoring. You have the great for factoring. When I'm talking about equations, what's the first thing we should do on this problem? Why? Yeah, exactly. Remember, we're trying to simplify, and we have to simplify both sides. So let's go ahead and distribute this one together. When we distribute, we're going to distribute this two into these parentheses. How many things does it go to? One, two, or three? Two. It doesn't go to this ten, does it? No. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and distribute. Can you tell me what I'm going to get? Two plus seven. Yeah. Plus ten. Perfect. Plus ten. That's still there. Very good. Equal. Left hand side's done. We've gotten rid of our parentheses. If we have to combine like terms, we'll do that on the next step. Let's go ahead and do the right hand side. What are we going to get now? That's a gr that's great. I want you I wanted you to catch that. Are we going to have? Well, actually, it's going to be twenty x. But are we going to have plus twenty x or minus twenty x? Why? Good. All right. So we're not just taking this number. We're taking the number with the sign and multiplying that to both of those terms inside. Of course, not the negative or the minus five in the end. So here we'll have the minus twenty x and then minus five. Are you still with me? Yeah. Okay. Next step, we are going to continue down and see if we can combine any like terms. Remember when we talked about like terms, they have to be on one side of an equation. So do we have any like terms in this problem? Yes. On the right side? No. On the left side? Yeah, just our numbers there. So when we combine those, we'll get our 2x squared plus 20. On the right hand side, we're just going to leave it the same. Negative 2x squared minus 20x minus 5. 
Now we're going to look at this problem and I'm going to give you a little hint. Uh, before when we solved equations, before this particular problem, we didn't really have any x squareds. We had just x to the first power. We got rid of the smaller variable. Do you remember doing that on, I think it was Wednesday when we did that? We got rid of the smaller variable, then we solved it as usual. Those were your steps. If you ever have a power 2, if you have a power 2, we're going to solve everything to one side because we're going to have to factor. We, we learned this on, on Thursday that we had to factor in order to solve these problems. So what we want to do on this problem, get everything to one side and then factor it. Are you still with me, Dr. Head, if you're okay on that? So how do we get everything to one side? Which way do you want to move it? Do you want to move the stuff on the left to the right or the stuff on the right to the left? If we go from here to here, we're going to have a lot of negatives in there. Do you see that? Maybe not such a great thing. You can do it, but it's going to be very hard to factor it. Uh, if we keep our a term, notice how that's, our, that's going to be our a. Do you see that? Like the x squared. If we keep that positive, it's way easier to factor. So let's go ahead. Let's move this stuff on the right to the left. What do I need to do to do that? Okay. So we're going to add the two. I'm going to do the step by step so you really see it. Add 2x squared. That, of course, is going to get added to the 2x squared over here. And we'll get what? And we still have that plus 20. And on the right-hand side, we have minus 20x minus 5. Okay, keep going. Which one do you want to do now? Okay, either one but really doesn't matter. We can do the plus 20x. Does it get added to either one of these? So we're going to add our own little space for this term. And we'll have 4x squared plus 20x plus 20, don't forget about that, equals negative 5. Hey, am I good to go right now? Is this what I want to see? Do I want to have this stuff over here and a number over here? What do I want over here? Do you remember why I want zero? Someone who was paying attention to the last like two minutes of class yesterday, explain to me why I want zero on the right and not a number on the right. Go ahead. Because then the zero product property won't work. That's perfect. If you didn't hear her, she said that's because then the zero product property will work. This thing doesn't pick up voices very well, so I got to repeat that for you. No, no, you're fine. Uh, but that's why we need a zero over here. If we try to factor this right now, which factoring is the only way we can solve these type of problems, besides the quadratic formula, we're not there yet. It's, for right now, it's the only way we can solve these, and if we factor it and there's a number, the zero product property is not going to work. So, one more time, what do I need in order for factoring to work? What has to be here? Zero. Very good, yeah. We have to have a zero, otherwise we're, we're sunk. So, last thing we're going to do is add that five. We'll do that to both sides. We'll get 4x squared plus 20x plus 25 equals 0. Awesome. How do we solve it? Let's try factoring. What do you look for when you try to factor? What's the first thing you should do? Does this have a GCF? No. So what's the next thing you do? Number of terms, great. Okay, let's look at number of terms. How many terms do we have? Okay, is it going to be different squares then? Could it possibly be that? That's only two terms. So what are you going to use for three terms? Set up the diamond method, see how far you can get on that. I want to see if you can factor it. Remember, I'll be walking around the room. If you need help on factoring right now, let me know. I'll help you out. By the way, folks, is this diamond problem going to have an extra step, or can we go directly to the factors? What do you think? Extra step. Yeah, definitely. Because our A is not one, we have that extra step. What number is going to go up top? What are we going to get for the bottom here? How do you get 100? Okay, good. Can you think of two numbers that add up to 20 and multiply to 100? 10. 10. 10. 10. Good. 
Now, of course, we just talked about this, but you can't go directly to x plus 10, x plus 10, because this 4 is messing us up. That means we have our extra step. If you don't remember the extra step, extra step says you use these two numbers to split up this middle term and write it as a, as a 4-term polynomial. So 4x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 25. And then we also have it equal to 0. Don't forget about the equal to 0. It is an equation. We can't lose that. And the reason why we do the four terms is what? What do we want to do now? Yeah, because the grouping, that was awesome for us. We needed four terms to do that. So essentially, we're kind of tricking the problem a little bit and saying, oh, instead of having three terms, I'm going to make it four terms so I can group. Let's group this thing together. What factors out of the first two terms, everybody? Don't forget about the x. We're going to get 2x plus 5. On the right-hand side, what factors out of these two? We're going to put a plus there because we're talking about positive 5, and again, we get 2x plus 5. Did we do it right? Yeah. The same. yeah. That's exactly what tells you is those are the same thing, same exact factor there. So we'll continue. We pull that out front. And what is remaining in our parentheses? 2x plus 5. Yeah, this 2x and that 5. Do you see now why we can't have a number over here? If we had a number here besides zero, the zero product property would not work. We wouldn't be able to set each of these equal to zero. So now at this point, this is what we did the last two minutes of class last time. We would say, okay, we have two factors. Each of them could be equal to zero. Now in this case, notice how they're both the same. We don't really have to show the work twice if you don't want to. I know they're exactly the same. So if I set 2x plus 5 equal to zero, do I also have to set this one equal to zero? Hopefully I'm going to get the same exact thing in each case, right? Normally, you would set each one of these equal to zero. And then we solve this down, just like you would a normal algebraic expression, which we're really good at, at solving at this point. So what are we going to do to solve that? Minus five. Mm -hmm. We'll get 2x equals negative 5. And the last step, everybody, what is that? Five. Is it okay to get fractions like this? Yeah. Yeah. x is negative 5 halves, we're done, as far as we go in that problem. How many people feel okay with this example? So yeah, they're long, right? They're long examples. You have to distribute, you have to combine like terms, you have to put everything to one side if it's a power 2 or higher, and then you get to solve it. So I'm going to make a couple notes on here for you to write down just to make sure you have this. For power 2 polynomials, if you ever see a power 2, set it equal to 0, set the whole equation equal to 0, and factor. Would you guys like to try one on your own? Do you think that would be helpful for you? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to give you one. I'll give you about, they, they take a while. It took us about 10 minutes to do that one. Um, I'll give you about three or four minutes. See if you can do it on your own that quick, okay? If not, just see it as far as you can go. I, I at least want you to get down to the factoring portion. That's important. <laughs> 